Now in this video, I'm not for one minute suggesting that this is a good thing to do. So let's imagine this was a long time ago in a place far, far away. And what we have over here is a guy who's pretty hungry and he loves the taste of monkey meat. And this thing here is quite a famous example and it's called uh, the monkey and the hunter. So here's the scenario. What you have is a hunter with uh, a gun or an, in this case an arrow and they're going to hunt this monkey. They want to basically uh, shoot it through the head so they can eat it. Now, um, this monkey's up a tree. This one, uh, the hunter in this case, is on a bit of a hill. Now, the question is, when they fire their arrow, and, you know, this monkey is super sensitive, and as soon as it hears that arrow being fired, it's going to jump out of the tree. It's just going to drop down to the ground to run away. So, which way does this guy fire? Does he fire up? So that the, um, the kind of uh, the arrow goes up in the air and then hits the monkey at the bottom. Does he fire directly at the monkey, even though by the time uh, this kind of leaves, the monkey already starts dropping to the ground? Or does he aim at the ground, so by the time the monkey hits the ground, the arrow hits the monkey? So, one, two, or three, make your choice now. Ah, good choice, but was it correct? Now, this is a thing about the motion of an object, uh, you know, like a projectile, and about the independence of both the horizontal component of velocity and the vertical component of velocity. And in actual fact, the way that this arrow should be fired is completely horizontally aiming at the monkey's head in order to, to kill the monkey so he's got some dinner for him and his tribe later. Now, the reason for this is that as soon as the arrow leaves uh, the bow, the monkey's going to start dropping to the ground. And this is going to have an acceleration of 9.81 metres per second. Per second. Uh, the arrow is also going to start dropping to the ground at 9.81 metres per second per second. It doesn't matter how quickly it's going, this could be going fairly slowly or incredibly quickly, but its vertical component of velocity is going to increase at the same rate as the vertical component of velocity of the monkey. And that means as the two things are moving, which is actually quite hard to do, what we find is that the two things drop to the ground at the same point, and that means the monkey will be shot in the head and will die. Maybe not the most sort of PC way of uh, looking at things, but this example is incredibly common. If, for example, uh, you fired at the ground, it would already have a, a vertical component of velocity and it would also keep accelerating vertically. So if you fired at the ground trying to hit the monkey, what would actually you'd find is that the arrow would probably hit the ground before it hits the monkey. The monkey survives to live another day. So let's just look at that with a couple of diagrams. So first up, the arrow. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do the horizontal component of velocity in green. Now what we're going to maybe think about is various times during the motion of that arrow. And what we find is that the horizontal component of velocity does not change. This is provided this is all happening in our perfect physics world where air resistance doesn't come into play. And what we find is that as time goes on, the horizontal component of velocity does not change. And that's really, really important. What about the monkey? Well, the monkey just fell straight down. So at all times, the monkey's horizontal component of velocity is zero. Now, gravity is going to be basically pulling everything together. You know, this thing here is uh, being attracted towards the Earth. And as time goes on, the vertical component of velocity is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So for the arrow, it starts off falling quite slowly, and as time goes on, it gets quicker and quicker and quicker. And indeed, it follows this lovely kind of parabolic path where it kind of basically gets steeper and steeper and steeper. The monkey has the same pattern. So initially, no vertical component of velocity, then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And actually what we find is that these two things, because they're both falling uh, at uh, uh, 9.81 metres per second squared, that means as every second goes on they get 9.81 metres per second quicker, uh, and their vertical component of velocity is the same. And this vertical component is completely independent of the horizontal component of velocity. So the monkey and hunter example is a really well-known example, just to illustrate how if you've got a projectile which is moving, uh, then its horizontal component of velocity is completely independent of its vertical component of velocity. And in actual fact, most projectile motion uh, examples, you have the same constant horizontal component of velocity, and it's only the vertical component of velocity which maybe decreases as it's going up or increases as it's coming down. So it's worth knowing about Good luck with any questions that might now come up about it.